What's up guys, it's Brian with NeverSayIt.com and since I've been neglecting my strongman friends because I've been focusing so much on the barbell and regular gym lifts that I thought this video would be about something strongman based and what gets more strongman than the log press. For the past few months I've been getting tons and tons of requests for a log clean and press video because pressing a log is hard. Much much harder than a barbell or an axle just because the weight is distributed further out in front of you. This makes the chance for things going wrong go way up and the log can be just about the most frustrating thing in the world. Because sometimes you go in and it goes terrifically and you think you've gained some ground and the next time you go in if you're not doing things the exact same way technically it doesn't go nearly as well for you and then you get frustrated and then you don't want to do log anymore. At least that's how it goes for me. Now any good log press begins with a clean. If you do not perform that efficiently you will not have energy left for the press. So we're going to start out this video just talking about the clean and how you can make it better. Let's go. All right, so starting at the very, very beginning, a lot of new lifters who are not acquainted with the log and are not familiar with the technique will just try to curl the log up. Trust me, I used to do the exact same thing, but it is no bueno. You always hear about strongmen tearing their biceps on log, and this is why. And I absolutely love you, man, but you cannot curl 300 pounds without something snapping. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that, but you can't. So learn the correct technique right from the beginning. Do not let your ego get in the way. Start low and start slow and build from there. No one needs to be sitting on sidelines for a couple months with a torn bicep. Now that's out of the way. You want to line up on the log with your feet a little wider than your shoulders, pointed outward at 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock. For a lot of people, this will be similar to your deadlift stance or maybe even just a tab wider. Just don't line up your feet too close together or else you're not going to get any power in that clean and it is going to be murderous. So you're going to have to try a couple different foot positions, a couple different angles and figure out where you're the most powerful. Experimentation. Now before you even think about picking up the log, you need to spin it so that the handles are tilted downward almost like you're trying to pour water out of a bottle. Starting with the log in this position is going to set your elbows up for your next stage of the clean. This is super important. Do not skip over this. The next step is to take a big belly breath and brace. Then reach down, grab the handles and squeeze them as hard as you can. Never forget to stop squeezing the handles. That is super, super important. Once you've done that, deadlift the log. Now for this next step, you're going to find out why tilting that log downward was so important. From here, you're going to drop down like you're trying to bottom out on a squat and you want to keep the log on the tops of your knees. Your elbows are going to shoot straight up in the air. I call this spider pose because I think you look like a spider. I'm sure there's a more technical name for that, but that's what I came up with, so that's what you get. In this position, you're going to want to be very careful not to let that log drag you out front onto your toes. You're going to want to keep your weight mainly on the middle of your foot to your heels. It's really important to note right here that your butt is down and your elbows are up. You do not want your butt pointing backwards or your elbows pointing backwards. Anything that's going backwards is not going to be going vertical when you decide to put effort into the motion. This may be a little harder with strongman girth, but a lot of the top guys do it, so with little practice, you should be able to as well. At this point, the log should be as high on your chest as possible. It is not going to stay there, but your intention is to keep it as high as possible because that is where you want it to end up. Aim small, miss small. Now, a lot of people will do this differently, but I like to use the rebound of that squat to start the log moving vertically. For me personally, cleaning a log is a very violent and explosive movement. If I try to limp into it, it does not go well for me. After I catch that rebound, I explode my hips as hard as possible. I try to time it so that I can kind of scoop them underneath the same way that I would with a stone or on a front squat. At the same exact time, I'm trying to curl my wrist vertically as hard as possible and taking my elbows from that up position and rotating them as quickly as possible around to the front position. The faster that you can move your elbows from the up to the forward, the better off this is going to go for you. You want to be focused on rolling that log up your body, keeping it in contact the entire time. If you did this correctly, the log should be up at your throat, you should be in front rack position, and you should be happy that the first portion of this lift is over. All right, so you made it to the front rack position. Congratulations, man. I know it is super uncomfortable where you're at right now, but don't worry, if you hit an overhead press PR, you're going to be happy, so you just got to deal with it. So this step is super important because the better and more stable your front rack position is, the higher the chances of you actually getting the press. That log should be slammed up against your throat, pushing your chin upward, and you should be leaning back so that the bar is over the middle of your foot. If you can see straight forward and the log is not driving your chin up to the sky so that you're staring at the ceiling, then you are not in a good position. You got to fix that before you even think about putting in any leg drive. You want as much body contact with that log as possible, so flare out your lats and try to drive your shoulders upward. 
Your butt should be flexed so your posterior chain is fired and that will do a lot when you're trying to hold a heavy log out in front of you. You should also be squeezing those handles as hard as you can still. Never stop squeezing those handles. So now while you're squeezing those handles, you want to drive your elbows forward as far as possible without losing your grip. If you drive your elbows too far forward, your hands are gonna start slipping and you're not gonna have power in that press. If your elbows are straight down like they will be in a strict press, you're gonna have a tendency to push that log up and out in front of your face and you're not gonna finish the lift. It's just not gonna happen. Take your time in this position. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, that log is constantly breaking you down, but you need to make sure that you are in the best possible front rack position. Otherwise, you're gonna miss the press. And the last thing you want to do is miss that press and have to start all the way back down at the ground, cleaning it back up again, getting set, and then try and drive again. Do it right the first time so you don't need to do it a second time. The last point that I wanna cover for the rack position is your breathing. A heavy log is incredibly oppressive. It feels like you're gonna die, it feels like you're gonna pass out, and you have to be careful because a lot of people do. Don't die for a log press. Some people choose not to breathe at all. They will take one breath before they're clean, get it up the front rack, and they'll press before they let that air out. I personally would die. So if you're like me and you need more oxygen, just make sure that you're taking shallow breaths and keeping your butt flexed. That will keep that log from breaking you down. A lot of strong men will get to that front rack position and then as they're taking breaths, you can actually see that log just slowly breaking them down forward. Every single breath, that log drops half an inch. And a half an inch on a log press is the difference between getting the lift and missing it. Everyone is different, so you need to take some time and figure out your breathing patterns. And believe me, a lot of times your breathing pattern will be different if the weight is lighter compared to when it's heavy. There is a lot of trial and error with the log and many times it is super frustrating but you need to get acquainted with it, you need to figure out your breathing, and you need to figure out where your best front rack position is. So let's move on to the press because none of this matters if you cannot complete the lift. Okay, so when applying leg drive to a log, a lot of times it looks different than when you're using a barbell or an axle. A lot of times the log will be a shallower and faster dip and drive. The faster you drop down, the more explosive you can be when you reverse that movement. With a barbell or an axle, you very well may be able to dip a little bit lower, but a log is too unforgiving. If you drop down too far, that log's gonna get pulled forward and you're 100% gonna lose it. Now you're already in a lean back, unpowerful position. The last thing you wanna do is bend your knees forward so you make your body into almost a Z. That's a terrible thing to do and you're not gonna get any power of your leg drive. So when you go to initiate it, you're going to want to push your knees outward and drive on the outside edges of your feet. This is gonna allow you to stay more upright and create more force from the floor, driving up through your legs into that log. The last thing you wanna do is let your knees drift forward and get in this super unpowerful position. Look at that, no one's getting power out of that. And you look stupid. Also, since you're already in that lean back position, you're gonna have a tendency to wanna to push the log out or straight up and lean back further, but neither one of those is a good plan. If you lean back too much or the log gets too far in front of you, you cannot get that real estate back. Don't give it up in the first place. So what I try to think of is taking that log that's already up against my throat, driving my chin towards the ceiling, and just letting it slip right off my chin and pushing it to a plane directly in line with the back of my head. Since a log is so much bigger than a barbell or an axle, you will not have the leeway to let that thing get out of the groove. If it's out of the groove, it's not going. Also try to think of the press as a throw and catch motion. Your throw comes from your leg drive where the bar is literally tossed off your shoulders for the first couple of inches. The catch is where you drop underneath with your arms locked out just like a barbell jerk. You want to use the weight of the log to try to push yourself underneath or squeeze yourself between the log and the floor. The faster you can do this, the more weight you're gonna put above your head. When you're first learning how to do this, it's gonna feel very, very much like two completely separate motions and it's kinda of like patting your head while rubbing your stomach. It's gonna be completely confusing and you're never gonna feel like you're gonna get it. But if you keep practicing, it's gonna get better and better and it's gonna to lead to bigger overhead press numbers. This is massively, massively important. All right, so there you go. A little love for my strongman brethren and just giving you guys an idea on how I personally perform the log clean and press. I hope you guys found this helpful and maybe some of you will go out and try the log clean and press for the first time. Join the dark side. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there is another topic you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below and we'll see if I can get around to it. But right now there just doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day. And a quick camera update, this one is an upgrade from the last one in the previous video. So this is the newer than the new camera. Yeah. Which was absolutely made possible by you guys hitting that support button, so I really, really do appreciate it. I know a lot of you did in the past couple days, and that blows my mind. I am overwhelmed, I am humbled. Thank you guys so much.
And as always, keep working hard, do something amazing with your lives, be nice to each other, and I will catch up with you later in the week.